Okay, so we just saw Harbaugh sort of smirk and sort of laugh at the Lamar Jackson trade request. What's the buzz there now in Phoenix regarding that, Albert? Well, I mean, this felt like a nuke. You know what I mean, Colin? Like, if you look at, like, the way this happened, he Harbaugh sat down at 745 at a table, and Lamar hit send on that tweet at 748. And I think that this is sort of where the situation is. That trade request went in over three weeks ago. There's obviously the person that's representing Lamar out there to teams. And it feels a little bit like Lamar's camp has gotten a little bit desperate. Now, in the end, I, I think that both sides are so invested in each other that there eventually will be some sort of resolution here. But it's very, very clear that Lamar Jackson is looking at the idea of leaving the, Ra leaving the Ravens in a very, very serious way. And, I, you know, I, I think to some degree the communication with the Ravens has been cut off um, to sort of prove wow. that point. This further proves that point. And, I mean, we'll see where things go from here. Obviously, there's nothing happening inside the building with players yet. But, I mean, we're just a few weeks away from off-season programs beginning, OTAs a few weeks after that. So, you know, obviously the Ravens are going to have to, you know, try to find some sort of middle ground um, with Lamar Jackson between now and then. And, uh, you know, certainly I think what happened this morning was a sign of where things are. Um, let me ask you, I, I... – <sighs> The Ravens have two Super Bowls and were 15 and 8 in the postseason in the Brady and Peyton Manning era. So they've won yeah. before Lamar, and they'd get two first round picks if they moved him. They'd win after Lamar. They, they've proven mm -hmm. that. Um, I also think Lamar has a point at that Deshaun Watson contract. He's like, guys, you're not going to offer me 100 million less. What if J Mac said this earlier? They said, okay, we'll give you a fully, um, we'll give you a franchise tag for a year. Fully guaranteed $45 million. Would that satiate him, or is that not enough either? Is this just long? Does the contract have to be fully guaranteed and long? Yeah. I, I think that the question is how long, you know, at this point. Like, to me, like, the, the solution has always been maybe a Kirk Cousins type of deal with more money involved, but maybe a three-year fully guaranteed deal. I think that that's where the middle ground is. I, I think a big part of this, Colin, for Lamar is, uh, is principle. And look, I know that sounds silly because of how much money he's turned down. But if this was really about the money, I think he would have just taken the money. I think the way that Lamar looks at this is, all right, so for five years, I took on an unprecedented amount of damage for a quarterback. I played out my rookie contract. I played out my fifth year option. And now you're the one that wants injury protection three years from now. I'm not giving you that. And so, like, I think the middle ground here, instead of doing a traditional top of the market quarterback contract, which is what the Ravens have offered, um, and doing a Deshaun Watson type of contract, which is what Lamar Jackson wants, do the Kirk Cousins deal where you say, let's do three years, fully guaranteed. We'll give you a no tag provision. So if you want to be a free agent in 2026, you've got a free way to get there. And let's go forward for the next few years and see how we can make this work. To me, like that would be the middle ground. But it feels at least like things have gone off the rails to a degree where there's going to need to be some relationship mending before they can come to any sort of compromise. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of different reports um, on the Carolina Panthers, the number one pick. Again, you're in Phoenix. You're at mm -hmm. the owners' meetings. You hear this stuff. These are great conferences to go to to just hear the rumors. Yeah. I, I, I still think Bryce Young's the best, but I don't know if he fits their yeah. plans. What are you hearing? Yeah, I think Bryce Young's been the leader in the clubhouse throughout for them. You know, and I think going back to, you know, when they were talking about moving up to the number one overall, Bryce Young was sort of the baseline. So, you know, what I mean by that is when you trade for him, you got, when you trade for that pick, you got to be comfortable. Like somebody here is worth the first overall pick. And that's somebody I think for the Panthers was Bryce Young. And now they do work on all four of the quarterbacks, Levis and Richardson and, of course, C.J. Stroud, and see if any of those guys pass Bryce Young for them. But as of right now, I think that that baseline for them and who they pick first overall would be Bryce Young. Now, I think the guy who's closest for them would probably be C.J. Stroud. I think like, they like both those guys. I think they view both those guys as worthy of the first overall pick. And I think they'll be sort of parsing things between the two of them. And then they'll do all the work on Levis and Richardson as well to see if either of those guys, who actually are probably more physically gifted, like just as far as the way they look, like the figure they cut as quarterbacks, see if those guys have a chance to catch either of the, either of the other two um, between now and, and the draft. But as of right now, I think it's, it's, it's Bryce Young at a baseline with C.J. Stroud running a close second. Uh, listen, Green Bay's got their quarterback. They want 
They want Jordan Love to take all the snaps and OTAs. Mm -hmm. They're in no hurry at all. I presume they're saying, give us a first-round pick or we're not picking up the phone. That's what I presume. The Jets are in a situation where they got a new receiver. They got a young receiver. (laughs) It's a new team. I feel like the leverage is all Green Bay. Am I wrong? Yeah. No, because I think that like the leverage is always in the hands of the person who has, doesn't have to do anything. And until September 1st, the Packers literally don't have to do anything. They have their quarterback. They have their team. Rodgers' cap hit actually goes up after they trade him, so they're not saving any cap space by trading him. They would actually lose cap space if they trade him. So really, you know, between now and September 1st, they don't have to do anything. That $58.3 million is fully guaranteed, but the genius of the way the contract was written was they can pick that up whenever they want and start the payment on it whenever they want. And so that gives them flexibility. The Jets have to bring in Aaron Rodgers. Derek Carr's off the market. Jimmy Garoppolo's off the market. We see what's happened with the Lamar Jackson situation. I mean, to me, for Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, this has sort of become a zero-sum game. You either get him or you don't. I think ultimately cooler heads will prevail, but I do think that there's more pressure on the Jets to get something done here than there is in the Packers, at least until we get to the end of August. Very exciting. So again, Lamar Jackson, um, let me throw this at you. If you're the Mm -hmm. Colts and you know you're not going to get the first two quarterbacks, they may not like anybody after the two. That's why they're not moving up to three. (laughs) They're like, Mm -hmm. we're not in love with these guys. I would think the Colts would have a meeting over Lamar, right? Like this, the third Lamar wins 75% of his games or a kid from Kentucky who may be a miss. Well, if we're talking about it generically, Colin, like teams that are picking in the top 10, if you don't want to give up a top 10 pick to get Lamar, you can wait until after the draft. And then as part of signing an offer sheet, you'd be talking about picks in 24, 25. So say you're the Colts and you're not wild about the quarterbacks that are going to be available to you at four, You can sit there for the next three weeks, look at Will Anderson, look at Jalen Carter, take one of the two and then get past the draft and sign Lamar Jackson to an offer sheet. And now you're giving up your first round pick in 24 and 25 instead of the fourth overall pick this year. Yeah. And if you think you're going to be pretty good with Lamar as your quarterback, now you're talking about maybe the 25th pick next year instead of the fourth pick this year. So I do think that that's one piece of all this that people aren't paying attention to when it comes to where other teams stand with Lamar Jackson. If you're a team that's, that's picking in the top 10 that needs a quarterback that isn't wild about this year's quarterbacks. I mean, it would definitely behoove you potentially to wait until after the draft and then make your move on Lamar Jackson. So I don't have a sense that any team is doing that quite yet, but could it happen? I mean, logically it would make sense if it did. Yeah. That's really interesting. You could get the pass rusher and yep. then get Lamar and you give up the pre the net. Cause I, they also need a pass rusher. They need a quarterback. Right. They need a pass rusher. They could probably use another receiver. They could use picks. That's a that's a good call. Albert Breer at the owner meetings. Well, scarf up all the free food they offer if they do. You know, <laughs> take advantage when you're those, con, those you know conventions. Have I'm fun. not staying here. I'm staying down the street. Wow. <laughs> all right, Albert. Good seeing you. All right, thanks. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.